G'day everyone, how's it all going? Welcome back to Louis Garage. So we are working once again on the Lotus Exige. Um, you may notice there's been quite a few updates, or maybe you won't, I don't know. Uh, depends on how, you know, how closely you follow my videos, how, how much you know about Lotus interiors. Um, there's been a lot of updates to the interior of the car. Uh, we've put in the gated shifter. Um, I've put on some new panels here, so it looks a lot better than it did before. And um, I've just made sure that everything is screwed down and buttoned down correctly as well, which um, admittedly it, it, it really wasn't before. Um, I put in a new seat rail, um, so the seat is now stable and I'm able to adjust the seat um, backwards and forwards, so that's nice. And one last thing that I want to do, um, which really improves the visibility and the usability and the practicality of the car, is to put in a reversing camera for my digital dash. So you may remember that I've got an AIM MX2E, I think that's the model, MX2E, uh, digital dash uh, that came with the car. Uh, unfortunately, they did not connect to the reversing camera with the AIM digital dash. Now, the AIM actually has a little slot at the back um, that uh, you can plug in a reversing camera straight into. So it's designed this way already um, to allow you to plug in a reversing camera. The way that it works is that you basically just push this button uh, which used to control the illumination levels on the dash and on the climate control um, but that has now been repurposed by the AIM um, to turn the reversing camera on and off. So it's a really really straightforward really simple system which is great and it's all integrated together with the AIM. So unfortunately I cannot show you the installation of the uh, receiver module which I've put um, just behind uh, the binnacle here. Um, so I'll show you some photos because I think I took some photos. I wasn't originally going to do a video about the reversing camera install because I thought it was going to be quite simple. Um, but I think it's actually a little bit more complicated than I realized. And it seems like there's a bit of interest online um, around how this all works and the results from it as well. Um, so I'll flash up some pictures of the wireless module um, as well as uh, you know all the links and stuff in the description so that you guys can buy all the kit that I got from Elise Shop. Uh, and you should be able to do this yourself if you have a AIM uh, digital dash. So, okay, this is the rear of the car now. And what are you going to need to install the wireless camera? Well, you are going to need the actual camera itself, um, the transmitter for the wireless module. Um, it is also advisable to have a 2 amp inline fuse. Um, after talking to Elise Shop, they said that's probably a good idea. So we're going to wire that up, that up as well. Um, and you probably do need some spare wire that you have lying around um, so, so that you can connect um, all the different wires uh, from, from the uh, wireless camera. Uh, so we've only got a positive and a negative wire that we need to connect and our aim is to uh, connect that to uh, connect the positive wire to something that has ignition power um, so that I can actually turn the camera on and off uh, without having to go into the reverse gear. Um, sometimes you may want to connect it to the reverse light um, so that uh, the module powers up or the camera powers up uh, when you select the reverse gear. But in this instance, because we have a button, um, I don't want to go into reverse gear and then have to press the button or press the button and then have to go to the reverse gear. I just want to press a button. Um, and it also means that I can see behind me uh, even when I'm not in reverse. Because as you can see, uh, there's really not much rear visibility on an Exige. In fact, there's not even a rear view camera on my Exige. So it's probably beneficial to be able to use it as a bit of a rear view mirror. Oh, sorry, a rear view mirror on the Exige. Did I say rear view camera? Yeah. I, I, sorry, a rear view mirror. I don't have a rear view mirror on the Exige. Um, so it's probably beneficial to use the camera as a rear view mirror. Uh, so that I can actually see behind me because otherwise I only have these little pretty uh, you know side mirrors that I'm hoping to get some extended view uh, mirror caps for but you know never mind that's another video um, so basically th those are all the things that you're gonna need and you're also gonna need a drill uh, with some drill bits and um, a soldering iron you know someone who uh, knows how to solder <laughs> George um, and then we're going to start doing some drilling on the clam, which I'm a little bit scared about, but we'll take you through that as well. Alright, so here we are at the rear of the car, just uh, at the bottom of the clam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be installing it uh, just above the license plate. And you may notice that I have put some masking tape on here, and there's a good reason for that. It's because when you're drilling into fiberglass, you don't really want to be cracking the gel coat. So it's a good idea to put some masking tape on. 
um, so that uh, any any sort of pressure or any stress on the gel coat um, doesn't actually uh, expand out. So you can see what I've done. I have basically just marked up the holes where the reversing camera would go. Um, there's two mounting holes and then a hole for the cable to go through as well. Uh, the hole for the cable isn't super important. That's not really that important for the location uh, because you can kind of move the cable around. The really important holes are the two mounting holes. You want to make sure that those are aligned properly in the middle of the car and are straight. Um, and then we can go ahead and do some drilling. Alright, so we've just measured the little screw that mounts the reversing camera on. Uh, there's two screws and it's about three millimeters so we're going to go with about a two millimeter um, drill bit. Um, because these are self-tapping screws it should be fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure that will be okay. Alright, so I've drilled some holes. Um, unfortunately this one, the gel coat did kind of crack a little bit here but it, it's only very local and the good thing is um, we're not actually screwing anything into this, we're just feeding the wires through. What I might do is I might just put a little bit of super glue just around the edges here just to make sure it doesn't get any worse um, but that should be alright. So the other tip that I've got is to chamfer the edges of these little holes because we'll be screwing the screws into here. Um, so by chamfering hopefully it means that it won't crack in the future even if there's a bit of stress on there. And it's pretty easy to chamfer, you just get a drill bit that's slightly larger than the one that you used before. So here we go, I've got a 3.2 mil instead of a 2 mil and you basically just run um, the drill just a little bit just to just to cut into the gel coat a little bit and then that should be enough So yeah, that that should hopefully be enough um, Just to stop it from cracking in the future Cool now we're ready to put the reverse cam the reversing camera in Sweet, so we've just um, got a cable um, or wire through from the top uh, and we're going to use that wire to drag everything else up with it. Um, you can only do one plug at a time so yeah don't try and force everything to go together um, just be patient and do one at a time. Alright so we've uh, actually just used this little hole that was available from the factory. Um, I don't know what this hole is for but it seems like it's perfect for a reversing camera. Um, and we've pulled both the red and the yellow plugs through that um, so you'll need to pull it through both the holes, the holes that we just made down the bottom and also that hole there which is the boot um, floor uh, so it's going to be a little bit tricky but just do one plug at a time and you should be able to get it through uh, and then we can um, uh, we can screw in the reversing camera and connect uh, all these wires together alright so uh, what's happening, George has connected everything up at the back we have put in the two amp fuse in there that's in line um, and we have connected the uh, positive power to one of the green wires at the back there. Um, there's a little plug uh, all the way at the back that isn't really used in my car at all. Um, so you should be able to find that and there's a green wire coming out of that which has a... an ignition power source. I just wanted to show you guys the plug that we ended up um, using the cables from so I'm not entirely sure what this plug is for it's a little four pin or four wire plug um, and then there's this one here as well which I'm also not sure about so if you guys know what these are for please let me know because um, they don't seem to be uh, used anywhere um, but yeah that's basically where we got our ignition uh, power from and also where we splice into the ground as well um, so here's our whole setup so we've got the wires going there uh, George has tidied all this up by the way um, so it's nicely cable tied everything uh, and then we've got our inline fuse which is in here and then we've got all the extra wires from the reversing camera and then we've just cable tied um, the little wireless module up to here and it all seems to work pretty well so we are going to turn the ignition on Sweet, so ignition is on. Up here. Oh, yeah, right. it's up there. So hopefully you can see that. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the LED on. And that means hopefully we have a reversing camera. Let's give it a try. So I'm just pressing the button on the shroud. Oh look at that! Reversing camera for the Exige! Woo! -hoo! Yeah, George gives us thumbs up. That's what we want. 
So yeah, basically, this is exactly what I wanted. I want to be able to just press the button and it goes to reversing camera. And then if I press the button again, um, it just switches back to the normal dash. It's perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we've just finished the install of the reversing camera. And as you can see from the back of the car, it is pretty well hidden. Uh, you probably wouldn't even notice unless you were actually looking for it. So that's exactly what I wanted. Something that was a little bit more, you know, uh, low-key, pretty stealthy. Um, and, and everything looks pretty good. Um, so these screws up here, we just have to do them hand tight. Um, making sure, you know, that we got the cable and everything through first. Um, and then we had to bend the little bracket just a little bit down so that the camera is pointing towards the ground a little bit um, But you don't want to bend it too much uh, and that's pretty much all we had to do And what I'll do is I'll just show you how it looks like on the actual uh, digital dash All right, so we will put the key in Right, so I've put the key in, and what I've done is I've configured the aim dash just to have one camera. So I can just press this button on the side here. If I press it once, that goes into reversing camera view. Um, the image quality is not brilliant, it's not the best <laughs> that I've ever seen for sure. Um, the image is a bit hazy for some reason, and I, I don't know why. Um, the lens looks pretty clear, you know, I tried to take the lens out and have a bit of a clean, and I think that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Uh, there are some settings that you can play around with in the digital dash, um, but I found it, it's, it's pretty good just to leave, leave it on the default settings. And then that's back to the digital dash. So yeah, it's pretty easy to use, which is great. Right, so let's have a look at the settings as well for the AIM digital dash. Um, so you can go into the preferences by clicking on the top button on the left, and then you can go all the way down to reversing camera, press uh, the right button to enter and there you go there's the um, display for the reversing camera and then you can go down to here format brightness contrast um, so perhaps we might put on a bit more contrast um, yeah it doesn't really make much difference though I have to say yeah I've played around it with it a little bit but all, all I can seem to do is just make it um, have worse image quality um, so it might be best just to stick to the default, which is 50-50. I mean, it may just be down to the fact that it's a wireless camera as well. Right, and I've disabled the second camera as well, so... So that you don't have to keep pressing the button. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the um, AIM reversing camera install. Um, let me just change back to video one. There you go. So that's okay. So that's pretty much it for the AIM digital dash um, reversing camera install. Uh, thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, the Lotus Exige project is going really well. Uh, hopefully you've noticed a few differences in the car already, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a lot better now. Um, so I'll see you soon on the next episode.